Michael Ellenberger, RTR's fastest uh, reviewer with a 107.43 half, is going to give us his first impressions of the on-running cloud boom. Okay, Michael here from, from Road Trail Run, not the usual voice you might expect behind your camera. Uh, I'm here to talk about the on uh, cloud boom. So this is on's newest marathon racing flat um, just announced today, uh, which is, let me check, July 16th. So. Uh, the cloud boom, uh, like many of these modern day racing flats, has a full length carbon fiber uh, plate. They call it a carbon fiber infused speed board. Um, it also has some improved traction here with it with a revamped outsole. It has a dual layer of their Helion um, uh, midsole material. It's kind of their high end midsole material. We've seen it on a couple models before, and I've, I've praised it uh, in the past. And then it's got a new revised. Um, mono layer upper it's, it's actually really thin i think you can see my finger kind of through there um it's actually almost dangerously thin i would say but it's it's kind of saved quote unquote by this revamped piece that that coats around the the laces and then helps keep your foot in place i think this by itself may not be enough to kind of lock you in there um but this wide lace box and this uh, modified kind of area surrounding really helps a lot. It's a snug shoe, it's a snug fit. I went true to size in an 8.5. That is right, but it is uh, close. And I don't think an eight would definitely not work. A nine um, would probably be a little bit too big, but but beware, and, and it's actually quite uh, narrow there on the toe box. To be honest, performance uh, on the run, I liked it. It's a snappy, uh, you know, similar to what I just described, kind of you're here or you're there sensation that, that is due in large part to this stiff um, carbon fiber infused speed board. It is not bouncy necessarily. I think that some of the other shoes that use this Helion midsole felt a little bit bouncier. I think that that kind of energy return was a little bit swallowed up by that distinct kind of snap as you as you activate that carbon fiber plate, but it, it definitely has a rocker. You're definitely going to be propelled forwards. Um, it's it's going to be fast. I think that a lot of people will, will find the shoe to be very aggressive. Um, is it good for 26.2? I think I just, I need more time and, and we need more time to kind of formulate review and, and take it on more runs. The first impression is it's it's light. It's a 6.9 ounces and an 8.5. Uh, it's a nine millimeter drop heel to toe. They measured that with the, the cloud um, elements here fully compressed as, as it'll be when you're activating that foot strike. Um, and it's, it's aggressive. It's gonna be a fast shoe um, for fast days. I don't think you're gonna bring this out for a casual Sunday long run, um, but for for longer tempo runs or track work uh, or you know anything where you need to, to turn over and kind of want to make sure you're you're aggressively moving to that forefoot, I think that that this is the right option. So we're gonna have more. We're gonna have to test it, like I said, over over several more miles. But first impressions are there, which takes me to my first brief comparison. So this is the uh, Adidas Ada Zero Pro. This is not the Adios Pro, which is their marathon specific racer, um, kind of targeted against the, the next percent in the Alpha Fly. A little lower to the ground in this one, less stack. Um, Sam and I are both still testing this one. It's got uh, a really snappy, kind of a toe based carbon fiber sensation. It, it doesn't kind of have that bounce that, that you might expect from a next percent or, or a uh, you know, the, I add a zero pro, I assume, or adios pro rather. I haven't tested that one. Um, it's got light strike. It's got boost. It's a, it's a snappy shoe. Like I said, fast, probably a great, um, 10 K 15 K even 20 K racer. Um, obviously no races to test it right now, but, but we're still reviewing that guy. Um, another comparison would be the a six meta racer. We love the shoe, um, both, both aesthetically and kind of prefer its performance where this shoe falls a little short. Um, I, the only place really it falls short, I think, is is in its outsole. It's a pretty bare bones outsole, as you can see. Hopefully the camera picks up these slight grooves. I didn't run anything super technical in this shoe, um, ice or, or really wet conditions or snow, but even when it's wet and, and you're running over a painted element on the road or, or a metal grate or, or what have you, this shoe is a little, little bit dicey. And so I think that what On's done to improve that outsole is actually a really nice step and kind of an acknowledgement that people you know, need to be cautious, especially when running fast. Um, finally, another comparison would be to the Brooks Hyperion Elite. So this is the Hyperion Elite One, I suppose. At this point, it's it's an outgoing model. There's a there's a V2 with the the DNA Flash midsole taken from the Hyperion Tempo. Um, I like the shoe a lot. It was a, a very polarizing shoe. 
uh, unsurprisingly, I guess that, that it was considering it was replaced so quickly. Um, it's a very stiff shoe, uh, quite like the On. Um, it kind of has that distinct heel or toe, one or the other kind of snappy sensation. Um, but it's it's a nice shoe. It's a nice racer. Um, well, we have a full written review of that shoe. Um, comparisons. Um, we'll flush them out in the in the full review, and uh, I look forward to putting a lot more miles on this shoe. So thanks, guys.